All right, so we are back at Crossfire Jason's shop since the last video. They've got everything all cleaned up here and ready to go. We just honed one cylinder for a little bit of practice, and now we're ready to uh, to do the second one here. So, anytime you place the rings, you, you want to redo the the cross hatch in there. These cylinders actually look pretty decent. It might be hard to see on camera, but. For 7,500 miles, you can actually still see the cross hatch in there halfway decently. I'm gonna hit the inside one more time with the brake clean and a nice clean towel. Just make sure we got it as clean as we can get it for now. I think they actually make a special honing oil, but only rich people use that. The video I saw said use 10W30. We're gonna break the rules even further and use 5W30. <laughs> and I don't have an oiler, so we're gonna use this uh, turkey baster I have here. And score it just a, a little bit in here. Don't have to get too crazy with it. And then I'll just use my fingers to kind of smother it in there everywhere. And I'm gonna come in from the head side because it's really tricky and unnecessary to get these fingers here. Because obviously the rings aren't getting that far down. If you do go beyond that, these little stones will start to pop out on you and bind and you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna come out really any further than this either because the same thing will happen. That's really all I gotta do about eight, ten times like that. You can really see the cross hatch in there now. So the next step after that then is to take this to your slop sink and dawn dish it out like you're cleaning your good china. Alright, so we've got these all cleaned up and drying. What are we up to over here? So if you were having the water pump seal is leaking, now is when you would replace those. You'll see this little hole here. If you got a lot of coolant coming out of there, that tells you that your seals are bad. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on those, but there is a, two seals inside of here for the water pump shaft. That you need some certain types of presses and whatnot to get this stuff out and the seals back in. Did take the shaft out, because as you might recall, in the other video, the impeller was actually broken on the one that was in here. So what we're gonna do, is install this shaft and of course there's another special service tool that we don't have where what they want you to do is clip this little I don't know soft blunt point thing somehow attaches to this so that when you drive through the seals you don't you know rip your seals what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some grease on and hope for the best you do go through the bushing first which is pretty snug and as a result of that, you're gonna be pretty well lined up. You can see it's already tight, and that's just the bushing right there. And then what we're gonna do then is give her a couple little tappy taps. Looks like I'm actually already through the seal. So what I was actually stuck on is if you look at this shaft, it's a double D shaft for the where the impeller locks on, and it was that second stop was that there. So I just gave her a little twist and a little push, and it looks like we're through in good shape. I found if you put a 2x4 under the studs on the one side and under the you know the reed openings on the other side it sits almost level. I've cleaned this once already but it's been sitting around a couple days I'm just going to give it one one more once over. I'm going to make sure to clean out the journals good and the mating surfaces make sure all your thread holes look good. Make sure you get it in your eyes that's how you know you're doing a good job. <laughs> and it's worth noting that you want to make sure you get all the old silicone out. It likes to sit, if you look like this here, it likes to sit in spots like that. And that might not look like much, but in some of these coolant passages, like down in here, if you look, there's a little hole there. So you wanna make sure you don't got stuff floating around in here. Like parts of your impeller? Yeah. <laughs> Those that fit, if you have to, I don't know, yeah. Probably well, yeah, I was going to say probably better big than small, but that's not necessarily the case. <laughs> this guy, you're going to just set in the opening right here. And then try to get it so it's seated and flush. And then you got your four bearing dowels. These will drop in. There's one there. There's one there. Let's see, we got some brake clean coming out. Make sure they're down all the way. If you do have brake clean oil, something in there, make sure you get it out. You don't want these down all the way, because otherwise your crank won't be down all the way. And then you're gonna have problems. There we go. And 
the last thing we're going to set in now is the uh, locating dowels. There's going to be one right there. And then opposite corner, there's one right there. I'm going to slide this back. I think. To make room for my crank here. So these, this is the hole here for the locating pin that goes towards the counterweight when you put these on. Same thing on this side. This hole here, not the ones that go all the way through it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here. Use some Articat APV. Go back to our turkey baster front of here. And we're going to try to just oil some less. So this one I can just set in your two even. And like we said, make sure you put it so that this hole is towards the counterweight there. I'm gonna take my rods here, put some oil in there. Same thing here. Better ones you can't really get to and they don't have those through holes. I'm just gonna make it look like I'm oiling them. This outer one's kinda like the other outer one where it comes right off. Just like that. And the next thing we need are the crankshaft seals. And we'll put a little bit of grease on the inside of these. So I said this is the MIG side. Where's my keyway? So here's the keyway, so that's the MIG side. And I'll slide that guy on like that. And you see these seals have these little like fingers on it, so you can go right to the bearing like that. Up the PTO side, slide that guy in the just like that. Now we gotta get these bearings all lined up. So we're gonna set this thing into the top half. So this is the main side, so I actually have it backwards right now. Let's spin this guy around. And I think I said in the earlier video, I, I didn't really clean these bearings out just because I knew I wouldn't be able to regrease them, so I wouldn't really break clean those two too much at all really. So what we need now is all these holes here to line up with these dowels here. There's this groove in this bearing here. That's gotta go where this clip is. And then what you also wanna do is these little C-clips here. You want one of them pointing up and one of them pointing down. So now I got them both pointing up. We'll go ahead and spin this one here around like that, so that one's down, that one's up. And now we need to get this hole down and then there'll be a little hole on top then that'll be at 12 o'clock. Same thing there, so these two look good. That one there looks good. That one there looks good. And we will set this in. We have to grab it by the snouts because you want the rods to go down in there. So you can see for sure like this C-clip here lined up where I want it. But you can also see for sure that like this one here is not in the dowel. You can see that's not exactly 12 o'clock. See how you can spin it? That's what you don't want. So that's not down all the way. Now I want to make sure that the rods aren't touching the table. That will keep it from going down too. And you can kind of hear it falling in place. Push the seal back in all the way. There, that's where it goes. Now what you can do to make sure it's good, it actually says it right in the book, is to take a little punch or something in the hole and then just give it a little tap. You can see it moved a little bit and then stopped. See, you can actually hear it hitting the, the pins in there. See, that one's good too. That's how you know it's in all the way. Yeah, 
you can hear it. It moves mm. just a touch and then you can hear it hit solid again. So these little, they look like snap rings, are actually seals. They separate the two halves. What you want is, so you can see I got this gap up top at 12 o'clock and then this gap is down at 6 o'clock. And that just kind of makes it, you know, a better seal between the two. Because there's actually going to be some oil injection that goes into onto this guy. So it kind of keeps it all separated. Put just a little bit of oil on that gear. Oh, I also added, this is, I think they call it a seal spacer. That slides on. You might be able to get this on after the pieces are together. I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to set it in there now. So it actually holds the seals in when the motor plate gets bolted on. I'm trying to see the outline of it here. Brake clean, mating surfaces one last time. And then we're going to put our silicone gasket maker on the bottom half of the case. Now what we're going to do then is kind of do a lap around every bolt and then otherwise you know it's kind of a line on really the whole surface here. Just lightly, evenly, kind of spread it out. You can see how, even though it looks like there's not a lot here, once you start smoothing it, it seems like you have a lot. This whole thing siliconed up. We got our seals where we want them. We got our crank and bearings where we want them. We got our snap rings where we want them. C-clip is in and below the surface. We're ready to drop this guy in. Obviously you want to make sure it orient the right way. So you can see the big bell housing here. That's the MIG side. It's going to line up over here. We also got our locating dowels there and there. So it's going to have to kind of come down nice and straight and square. You're not going to really be on much or any of an angle here. Let's see how this goes. dowels and bearings into position. Oh, I like butter. Look at that. The other thing I forgot to mention is spin it and make sure the shaft spins. Oh, well. right. Yeah, you got to mesh those gears up. Yeah. I think that's about it. What do you think? Uh, you got a bit of a gap there. Yeah, but it kind of... I think it'll pull together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stuck down there. And you see a spacer sits nice and flush here. Yeah, so probably could have put that in after. It looks like it spins freely right now. And on the MIG side, that seal's sitting about flush as well. All right, so at this point, you're gonna do these crank bolts or case bolts. There's 10 of them. There's gonna be four on the PTO side, four in the center, and then two on the MIG side. So I'm just gonna gently drop them all in dry. Shout out to my father-in-law who helped me out wire wheeled all these so they're all nice and clean. Ready to go. And I'm gonna make sure I hand start them all. So then it tells you to tighten them in three steps. Torque spec on these is 29 to 33. So I'm gonna go with 30. And it tells you to do it in three steps. So I'm gonna do 10. 20 and 30 foot pounds. And then go back through that order every time as well. Set so number one, two, three, four, five, six, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now I'll go up to 20 and do it again. All right, we just finished our second pass at 20, and now we're up to 30, and we'll do it one last time. And the next thing we're gonna do is take this long skinny bolt, which is right at the water pump housing, set that guy in there, hand start it, thread it in. For some inexplainable reason, they want you to do this one in three steps by itself. There, that's one step. There's two steps. Nope, we'll do it in four steps for overachievers. Maybe even five. Ten's not much, right? All right. Yeah, I don't feel like going to turn right now. I think that's good. So ten was actually on the high side of the torque range. I went down to, yeah, it's good. It's seven to ten foot pounds. That, that was eight there and it clicked. I'm, I'm sure a plenty tight fit little guy. The next step then is to flip the whole engine over and then there's four more bullets that come in from the other side. So now that we got our flipped over, we have screws 12 through 15 to do in three steps. So those are the two bigger ones that go on what I've been calling the bell housing. Right there and there. Then we got these two little guys. So the two bigger ones on the mag side are gonna be 25 foot pounds and the smaller ones are gonna be that eight again. I'm gonna use this ball end again because I don't think you can clear it any closer. Even though I have the torque setting set, I'm not gonna go to it right now. I'm just gonna snug it up a little bit. And then the one after that, that's 12. This is 13 over here. Again, I'm going to just barely snug it up. And then 14 is the one back here. Now we're going to go to 10. Right there. And then we got the near side. Give these guys just a little bit more. I'll go to 20 on the other ones. And then I'll go till these click. I'm at 96 inch pounds. See how they feel. There we go. There we go. And then 25 for the last two. And that's it, the crank halves, or the case halves are in. And hopefully it spins, oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty nice. So we got the case together, got every bolt done. Silicone's starting to dry up nice. Now I have the oil pump side facing me. We got this little spacer bushing that kind of holds up this side of the shaft. I took off the old O-ring. The kit I have came with new O-rings. I'm gonna put this new guy on. And slide that guy all the way down. The other thing is there's this little thrust washer that you want to put on like that. And then you shove this guy in. Just like that. Then you grab your oil pump. And your new O-ring. That guy goes right there. And you'll see I spun the crankshaft 
So that shaft is pointing up and down. And then I also have the oil pump facing up and down. And then that way it'll mate together nice. And the other thing I did is I have these wood blocks in here. Because otherwise you'll be touching the table here. I need to get some Loctite on these bolts. See a little bit of blue on here. These are 8 foot pounds or 96 inch pounds. And what we're going to need to do next then is gently flip it over and there's a uh, little oil line down there that we got to get. You can see the sky lines up pretty nice. Looks pretty clean. And then this is a little banjo bolt. Make sure it's not plugged up or anything. Make sure it's nice and clean. Then you go through it with one washer. And then the other washer goes on the back side. Like so. And this one does not require Loctite and is six foot pounds. Yeah, I don't know that I'm gonna give it all that much. It sure don't. It sure feels like too much. I think I'm gonna call that good. Kind of like what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I was saying earlier that that uh, doing stuff like that in aluminum, especially a bolt that small, makes me super nervous. And I would much rather do it by hand than have it too loose than too tight. Yeah, that's pretty tight. I'm gonna call that good. We're gonna go ahead and put the reeds in. Um, you have one gasket per reed. It goes on the actual case here. And then your reed will drop in. And then you'll take your carb boot, reed to boot, whatever you want to call it. These V-Force reeds, I had to cut this down. It's not the prettiest looking thing ever. So I'm going to do this portion the way that you normally would. But I'm going to put just a little bit of silicone on the perimeter of this. Again, we're going to do barb pointing down. I think I'm going to grab a couple bolts on the like opposite corners to help guide it down in. And I'm going to try to start those before I set it down. There we go. Now they're started, so then I'll set right there. We're going to crisscross the inside and then do the outside. And you can see how small the little amount of silk I put on there and it's still all squirting out. Now we are going to air test this motor when we're done. So I'm going to go and ho ahead and hook up the oil line now. But we will end up taking it off before we start the motor to prime the oil pump. So once you get these on, we're going to be working on the other side. So we'll flip it back around the other way. Now is when you would install your water temp sensor if you had taken that out. And make sure you zip, it, zip tie it off there as well. For spring relief. We got this little goofy spring washer thingy. We're going to put it flat side against the motor. And the part with the little step on it is going to be on the back of the impeller. You'll notice back in here this metal thing is almost like football shaped. It's got a point at 3 and 9 o'clock. And this seal match, matches that as well. There and there. So you want to kind of keep that in mind when you work that guy in there. But it's able to push all the way down like that. Take your impeller. Make sure you got your seal installed in here with a little bit of grease on the inside. And line that up with the shaft and press that in place. Just like that. There's a little rubber washer and then a like a regular washer in there. This guy does get Loctited. Use the blue Loctite again. And this guy is like six or eight foot pounds or something like that, but we're gonna consider it just a little. Let's give it a little bit here. Call that good. Seems pretty good. Go ahead and put on the water pump housing. Um, we got ourselves a new gasket here, as you can see. Um, a couple of things you need to do is one account for both dowels. So mine are stuck where they came from. So I got one 
And the bottom of the cover, which is going to go into here, and then one that what would be the top of the cover right there. One other thing you need to do before you put this on, is you put a little bit of RTV or silicone or whatever your weapon of choice is, where the seam is here. And it's not so much to seal the case halves. What we're doing here is just making it so that the O-ring will seal where that crack is. Take a little bit of grease and put it on the O-ring, which will help the O-ring stay in place when we set it in the cover and try to install the cover. Just like that. And then with that grease in there, and I go anyway. <laughs> and then get your dowels to line up. And then work it on. Just like that. One, two, Next, we're going to put the thermostat in. I got the new gasket on the thermostat. You'll notice there's this little tiny hole that needs to go in the 12 o'clock position. Just like that. Just Cover and gasket here. And this guy's going to go like that. Thermostat still looks good. There we go. And then there's one odd valve bolt here that has like a tapered back to it. And then that goes in where you can see the, the tapered hole there. Eight foot pounds, no Loctite needed. Yeah, that's about eight foot pounds. Looks good to me. Just go until it breaks and then back it off <laughs> a little, right? <laughs> So the next step is to grab your dowels for your cylinders. Let's go over the studs like that. And then you can set your base gasket in. I did just break clean and wipe this down again. This one does not say up on it anywhere. Um, so I'll look and see if yours does. I'm going to go down one way. And go over your dowels. The next step then is to put your pistons on. What I started to do over here is I got my what they consider the small end needle bearings. These are the needle bearings that are going to be in the top of the rod where the piston goes. I also got the washer spacers that go on either side of the needle bearings in here and then I also have one wrist pin in here. That way when I put everything together it'll all have a nice slather of oil on it. Next thing we're going to want to do is check the ring end gap. So what you do is you take your new ring and you very carefully finagle it into your cylinder. It's a pretty snug fit. And these are a little bit on the brittle side, so don't force it. Get her down there like that. Then what you do is take your piston and you push it down just a little bit to where it's gonna be. Maybe to say there. And the reason I say there is because see how I got this shoulder here? I can check in on both sides and just to make sure I'm square. The other thing that's worth noting is that you want to get below, you know, where that ridge is, on um, where it rides. And then you want to grab your fueler gauges. According to the piston book here, it says 016 should be the minimum. But this only goes up to a 71 mm bore. This is an 85 mm bore, hence the 85 you read right there. And according to the cat, the minimum is 012. So I'm going to grab my fueler gauge and push it in there. And you can see it just does come through. So I'm going to call that one good. And then check the other one. This one has two per cylinder. At this point, getting down to this nitty gritty like this, 
I would keep these rings for this cylinder because there's a chance the other cylinder is off just a touch. And if that's the case, we want to, we don't want to be you know measuring this ring and then putting it in the other cylinder. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll repeat the procedure for the other cylinder and rings as well. So the next step we're going to do is put the rings on the piston. Kind of like I think we're looking at before. 85, that's the bore. And then obviously the top is top. You actually, on the bottom side, they're, they're square. And on the top, they're actually tapered just a little bit. So when the ring's on here, and you got the combustion pressure coming down on it, that little bit of a taper will force the rings out to get in the seat. And these are, again, a little bit on the brittle side, so you gotta be kind of careful. I'm gonna put this on the bottom spot first. Oops, I'm in the top one. Now we're going down to the bottom. Okay, now we're in the right one. And then you'll spin it until you get to that, there's a little pin there where it stays. And then that way when it's in the cylinder, these can't spin around, they'll be stuck there. And I'll go ahead and put the other ring on again, make sure the word top is up. And then work it around. So when we put this in, the this arrow points to the intake and exhaust side. Generally it's the exhaust side on this motor that's also the intake side, which is going to be away from us as it sits, just like that. And so that means that these openings are going to be on our near side, just off center. If you look at the cylinder, when it's installed, you'll notice that those pins are going to line up with this and with this. And that way your, your ring ends will always hit cylinder all the way up and all the way down. And I don't know if you could even do it, but if these were not in where those pins are, or if you install the piston backwards, these are gonna hit those ports and you're gonna have a bad day. So at this point, we're gonna put the needle bearings into the rod. Slide that in there, like so. Then you take two of the washers. And then they got a little Groover indentation on one side. Those are going to go to the inside. That's what cups that bearing just like that. And actually, before I do that, it's a good idea to cram some rag or paper towel or something. So if we drop the washer or we drop the circlip, it doesn't get in the engine. I'm going to grab my little piston clip here. All right, so we finally got that clip in there. And we just put one clip in for now. It's important you have the opening of the clip at either 12 or six o'clock. Otherwise, it can actually pop out when the piston's going up and down and the clip will compress if you have the opening on the side. Make sure those washers stay there. And now we're gonna set the piston on again, facing the exhaust port. Making sure those Washer stay there. I'm gonna take my wrist pin, which is soaking oil over here, and slide around through. Just like that. There, just like that. To hit the other pin. And now, we get to try to put that circle clip in on this side without the piston in my lap, and hope it doesn't go flying down in the engine. So we got the other wrist pin clip in. And what we're going to do now is line up our rings again. And then we're going to add a little bit of oil, especially where the rings need to make the transition here. Just see we got this little bit of a taper here and here and here. That's what we're going to start getting the rings on. We do have the arrow pointing in to the exhaust side. We got our base gasket on. We got our dowels in place. We've got our rings gapped in their proper position. Make sure the exhaust is facing the right way for this guy. There we go. So that one there looks good. There we go. Now we're getting to the point of the main cylinder, and there we go. Now we need to. Just keep sliding her down until we get our studs lined up here. And we'll just let her go. And there we go, that's about it. Now at this point I'm going to put 
a little bit more oil down it. Oh yeah, that's nice. Nice and smooth. That's how you know that your rings are where they belong. All right, so we got both cylinders installed, pistons, arrows pointing out. Um, you can see it spins real nice and free. You can see I don't have, I have everything started, but nothing cinched down. And that kind of makes sure everything is nice and square, because if you tighten it down and it's out of square just a little bit, this surface here will never seal up. I got new gaskets here. And I'm going to put a little bit of the high temp silicone on both sides of them as well. Kind of smooth it out like that. I do recall that this little goofy bend here was pointing up. So we're going to leave it that way. Set it like that. And now these bottom two inside ones are kind of a major pain in the butt to get to. Um, if you shove it on all the way, you have a hard time even getting the nut to clear in there. So with a back toe like this, I'm going to try to start these bottom ones. Maybe you can see from the top inside. So when you torque this down, you want to think of it as you know, a single rectangle and not two different squares. And what I mean by that is when you do your torque pattern, it's not, you know, a star here and a star here. It's inside out and a star. So I'm going to start with like this guy here. And then from there, I'm going to go to like the bottom right one over here. I kind of almost have to use a crow foot because it's that hard to get to. left of the middle four. All right, and then we'll go back to the top right. And then we'll start patterning the outside. And then we'll go back and torque down the uh, cylinders. It'll be back right, front left, front right, back left is the order. Torque spec, 34 to 51. What, how about 45? Let's do that. No lock or anything. And I, I guess I should throw the disclaimer out there. The book does tell you to use new bolts for these four. So obviously you should do that, but I'm not. <laughs> 35, 45, how's that sound? Sure. Extension. Three is supposed to be this one. So that should be all those. Next is to put on the cylinder head. Um, and what I'm gonna do in preparation of that is install the O-ring so they're smaller, thicker ones that go in the center. Like that. That's gonna be a little challenging. It? All right, we'll have to figure out what we're gonna do with that. And then there's a little thinner, bigger one that goes on the outside. The inside ones, I'm going to come up with some trick to make that stay in there. The other thing you got to do is my gasket kit came with these O-rings. It's kind of funky. Every head bolt gets one of these O-rings under, the, under its head. So those all go just like that. And you can see in the head how they all got this little taper on them. So I'll go ahead and put all these O-rings on. The trick I ended up doing to get that inner one to sit is kind of just pull it through my fingers like this, just stretching it just a little bit all the way around. And then I found it, it sits in there pretty nice and just like that. 
So we got all of our O-rings on our bolts. We got all our O-rings on our cylinders here. The book actually says to install the, a couple of spark plugs now just for a handle. So don't be afraid to do that. My hands are big enough where I can just palm this thing, so I'm not going to do that. And it also says to start four bolts opposite each other like that. And then what you can do is ever so carefully start those. So I got those four started, and I will look again. Make sure the O-rings all look good, and then that way I got almost like locating the most. You can't really set the head down. Now I can go ahead and start the rest. Another thing is that if you did put those plugs in for handles, you're going to want to take them out before you torque your heads down. So now we want to go ahead and torque the head down. I have them, I just went finger tight, pretty much just so it's touching the rubber. In two passes, we're going to go to 25 foot pounds. So I think I'm going to do 15 and then 25. I just did one pass at 15 foot pounds. I'm gonna go back over it at 25 and I'll show you the order this time. Number one is over here. And then I'm gonna throw the extension on to clear the knock sensor because I never took it out. So two is right here. And three is right here. And I'm gonna get rid of the extension. So according to the book, what you do now is put your exhaust valves in and then pressure test the motor. What we're going to do is button this electrical portion up so that we can finish the rebuild portion of the video and then just kind of talk through the pressure test at the end. So the next thing that you put on is this plate here. This guy slides over just like that. And it kind of goes in a groove like that. And what you want is this opening here. Torques back something like eight. We're just gonna do the old wing it again, but you do want to lock it on this guy. Alright, so we got the plate installed. Up next is the stator. You need to feed all these wires here through this hole. And then these three longer bolts hold it in place. Um, again, do use Loctite. Next we're going to put in the upper ignition timing sensor. So the one with the whitish plug, not the blackish plug, is going to be this top one here. And then depending on how you took it apart, it'll be the one that has this little rubber doohickey on it, unless you completely took that off. And then get that rubber guy seated in there as well. And then again, Use a little blue Loctite on these guys. Alright, so we'll feed the black plug through the big hole here. So then this little rubber boot guy here. You can see how the wires are kind of shifted more in the back, so I'm going to install it. 
So let the wires stay in the back. And then the last thing to do in here is you got this little clip. So again, we'll put a little bit of Loctite on. Make sure they got a little bit of slack. And tighten it down. Now we're ready for our, time, our, our timing key. So this is the original one, it might be hard to see. And this is the one we're gonna put in. I don't know if you can get a shot of that or not, but this original one here is just a straight up Woodruff key. And then this is what they call an offset timing key. If you can see in the profile of it, when it sits in the shaft, the flywheel is actually going to be rotated forward just a touch, which will advance the timing just a little bit. So I have to run premium fuel with this, which I did anyway. And then should get a little bit of power to boost out of it. On the left side, it's flush with the shaft, and then the flywheel will be cocked forward just a touch. Get it to focus, that would be great. <laughs> now it's time to put the flywheel on. Be careful with this to not set it down on a workbench and collect a bunch of shavings and whatnot in there. Um, so, what I'm going to do first is Loctite all of the starter bolts here. Grab this guy, just like that. We'll just get these finger tight for now. For whatever reason, and I'm gonna follow the book, but do it very lightly. I want some red lock tight in this guy, so I'm gonna put just like one little thread's worth on there. And then we're gonna line up our key, which I have at about the 12 o'clock position here. And it's gonna wanna really fight you with all these magnets, like that. And then we'll grab our bolt and washer. Grab my pry bar and my torque wrench. And then we're gonna go to 18 foot-pounds on these. So that's good. 50 foot pounds is what's needed for the the big guy. There we go. And there's this coolant hole back here. So well, here's our plan to uh, pressure test this. I got an inch and a quarter schedule 40 pvc cap and that fits pretty nicely in the car boot like that and then i got inch and a quarter adapter to go from you know a, a cup glue um to a thread and then a bushing down to i don't know what is that three quarter into i think this is for actually checking like expansion tank bladders, I think. I don't know, I found it at Menards. But what's nice about it is it's got a little Schrader valve bike type fitting here. Pressure gauge, and then means for us to adapt to a car boot. The exhaust, I searched high and low for, and could not find something that would plug this. The last motor I built, I was able to use one of these. So depending on what size motor you're using, maybe you can get away with something like this. This one's a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go even more redneck than that and I got some like rubber roofing or something I'm going to put that over the edge over the end of it shove this guy on get that and then what I use is my shock fox air pump I mean you can use a bike pump I would not use an air compressor though only going to 5 psi in the book I have to look it up it does tell you I could drop like a psi a minute or something like that I forget the exact number you know, if it holds there and you can count the 10 and don't move, you're probably in good shape. But if you can't build any pressure or you just watch it drop immediately, then obviously you should start looking for a leak. May or may not be able to hear it. Could be about anywhere. You know, like my white pipe here was cracked. The last motor I built had a pinhole in the white pipe. I've had the car boots leak. Um, I've had good luck though with, you know, the seals and the case and that stuff. If you're pretty sure you have a leak and you can't find it, what I have Dawn spray bottle. It's just full of water and dish soap. And then you can store it down with that and try to find it. So two final last steps here. Um, one, I forgot to mention there's the ground screw here, which that guy goes on. This is from the electrical stuff we put on. So you need these oil lines hooked up to your boots here for your air test. Once you finish your air test though, you're gonna wanna take these lines 
off. And then once you get the motor in the sled and your oil line hooked up and everything, you know, pretty much done and ready to go, you might need a, a helper. Watch these two ports here and turn the sled over repeatedly. It, it might take 20, 30, 40 times. And I would pull the spark plugs out all together. That way it won't, won't start and you won't wear your arm out as much. Keep doing that until you see oil come out of these two lines. That's how you know the oil pump is primed and working properly. Another thing you should do is run pre-mix in your gas tank for the first tank. And then you know your break-in period is gonna be about 100 miles, about a tank worth. So you'll have that extra oil in the tank. And then throughout that period, you know, no wide open throttles. You'll, you'll get on a little bit, half, three quarter, vary your speeds a lot, um, you know, cause you want some pulls um, to help seat the rings, but no like a wide open pull. Make sure your coolant system is free of air bled. Probably through the manual on that one. I don't completely recall the procedure on that. Cause I know with the tunnels, how they point uphill in the back, they can hold air in there. You know, you got a coolant a cooler here but the motor is lower than that. And it can be hard to get that air out. Sometimes you have to like drive it up the snowmobile ramp. They make this lower. Read through the manual, see what they say about that. All right, so hopefully that was helpful to you guys. I'm sure this will really be a great resource for somebody that's looking to do this, even just to, to kind of go through it and see what you get yourself into is, is usually kind of nice, but I think we went into, into some really good detail here that'll definitely be helpful for some people. So. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate you taking the time to do that. If it was helpful to you, make sure to give it a like. Leave us a comment down below, and hopefully you'll get it back in the sled and fired up. you got a lot of work ahead of you. But uh, then we'll uh, we'll just have to, to wait and see for the first snowmobile video. We'll, uh, we'll just update you then. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Stay swanky. And uh, fix your sled.